Did you know that anytime when you compress matter, you're technically starting the process of creating a black hole, more specifically the singularity of creating a black hole? Now, there's no need to actually worry because even if you did accidentally create a black hole, it would pose no risk due to its mass. Stephen Hawking actually calculated out that black holes actually give off radiation that he dubbed the Hawking radiation and eventually lose its mass over time. So for instance, a black hole created from this ball here would be so small that the mass would actually evaporate quicker than it was created. Now you're probably thinking, John, did you say that we can't accidentally create a black hole? Does that mean that we've created one on purpose? Well, yes, technically any particle accelerator can make a black hole. Now there's no need to actually worry because like I said before, due to the Hawking radiation, they've actually posed no risk to the Earth. So technically at any moment, at any time, even right now, a particle accelerator could create a black hole just because they can. What exactly are black holes? Now, black holes quickly explained are basically collapsed stars that have been so condensedly put into one single space or the singularity that they actually absorb everything around them, everything from mass to other planets to even stars or more purposely put, light itself. Now, that also falls in line with Einstein's theory of relativity where if you get close enough to a black hole, time itself starts to distort, but that can be saved for another moment because that actually delves into some really, really deep territory. Physical properties of black hole vary on mainly if it has an electrical charge or if it has an angular rotation. Now, there are three different variants of names due to those, but I can't pronounce these except for the Kerr-Newman metric, which that is actually our local supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A. Sagittarius A lies at the center of our universe, giving it oh, its spiral hue and look to it, which is displayed in this image here. Now, what's amazing is that scientists are actually able to observe the flow of matter behind Sagittarius. That coupled with Kepler's law of planetary motion, we're able to actually know the density and mass of Sagittarius itself. Our ball of death sits down the road about 26,000 light years away, or more precisely in kilometers, that's 2.46 times 10 to the 17th power. The mass of about 4.2 times 10 to the 6th power in solar masses, to quantify that into something where you can might imagine it, that's about 4.3 million suns. Have you ever had the feeling of impending doom? Well, let's make it worse, because we're going to see what happens when we collide Sagittarius with Sagittarius. Now for the collisions of both of the black holes, I'm going to be using a program that I found called Universe Sandbox 2. The variants on whether the black holes collide or not are based on rotation and the angle that they hit themselves at. Now there are three possibilities of what could happen when two black holes say hi to each other. Best situation is that one eats the other and one just gets bigger or its mass doubles. And if it consumes more, they just add to its mass and volume. The second outcome is that the black hole actually hits the other at an angle to where it flings it off into space due to its orbit. Now, that's probably a lot worse than the other one just getting bigger, but the third outcome, which is they both rotate around each other while simultaneously going off into space at an extremely fast speed, in my eyes is probably the worst outcome. Now interestingly enough, scientists were able to actually pick up audibly via waves of gravity what black holes sound like when they're colliding. The audio you're about to hear is odd, but just try to imagine, and I'll even put up the visual representations, of two black holes coming together. Now this video is supposed to be about the possible physics behind black holes colliding more a quick look at them. And I know that I'm not an expert at this, I mean I'm just a college student taking physics 1. The question I want to propose to you before this video is over is that coupled with the event horizon eating up time within a black hole, what would happen if you're stuck in between two black holes colliding? Do you think time itself would freeze for you, or do you think time would pass so quickly to the outside world that you wouldn't even be able to see what happens, also coupled with the fact that black holes bend light around themselves?